E. Okay. All right. All right. Let's go to Facebook Live. All right, everybody. Hey, everybody. Man. Times of refreshing. We are on part seven. Reset. Amen. Amen. All right, let's see here. Got it. Facebook, if you can see me, God bless you all. I have to go ahead and put in my settings. Here we go. Oh, I have to go. All right. Okay, here we go. God bless you. Thank you all for joining. Okay, okay so now it's public. Okay, if you are on Facebook Live, unfortunately, I will not be able to see your comments directly because I'm on too many different platforms and I won't be able to open it. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for joining us on today. Let me go add the followers. All right, praise God. Amen. Okay, God bless you. All right, here we go. So uh, we are now on part seven, part seven of our series, and I am super excited about it on today. So now what we're going to do is share the screen as TikTok. Come on in, TikTok. Okay, share screen. Where are we at? Um, oh, there it is. All right, here we go. Praise the Lord. All right, we are all set and ready to go. Praise God, praise God. So times of refreshing. Hello, everybody. God bless you. We are on part seven. And today we're talking about the great reset or resetting, which I think is really important when we're talking about your walk with the Lord. And let's just go ahead and get into it. Amen. Praise God. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's go ahead and open up in prayer. So Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you for just your, your love, your guidance, your life, the light of Christ uh, being on the inside of us, Father. We honor you on today. We just say thank you for the opportunity to minister to your people. I just uh, ask that everyone have an open heart and the mind of Christ be renewed on today. We thank you for the great reset that you have extended to every human being, Father, that as long as there's breath in our bodies, that we have an opportunity to reset and to get back on track with you. Lord, I just lift up every person under the sound of my voice. I just thank you for their lives. I thank you, Father God, for you making a way in their lives, a way out of no way, Father. I thank you for encouraging your people. I thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just thank you for salvation and the promise of eternal life as we talk about the great reset on today. In uh, Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you. We know that you're already here. I partner with you on today. And I just ask that you flow through me as I say what it is and share what it is that you want to share with the people of God on today. And these things we pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. God bless you all. Again, thank you. Uh, for those of you joining, welcome on TikTok. God bless you all. Welcome on Facebook Live. Welcome on YouTube, Instagram, and of course, my core group, uh, Zoom. Thank you so much. Um, if you all would like to sow into the ministry, um, I'll uh, post that if you can't see the screen. And uh, why should you sow into this ministry? Because we have an outreach uh, program where we send out books to people um, who aren't able to afford it or books to people who the Lord has led me to send as tools for them to be encouraged and to expand the arsenal and also uh, so that the kingdom of God can be established in their lives with the tools that the Holy Spirit has imparted into me to share with the people of God. Amen. I'm called to artists. I'm called to scribes. I'm called to uh, those who are in the entertainment arena and those who are actors and and, uh, singers and playwrights and filmmakers 
uh, light designers, set designers, uh, special effects, makeup artists, spoken word artists, et cetera. Any realm, anything in that realm, uh, those are the people that I'm called to. So I just want to say God bless you all. Also, follow me on TikTok if you want shorter um, excerpts of the ministry and of the sermons and the teachings. Follow me at LA Holtz, writer and director. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I just want to say thank you guys. Let's start with our review from last week, okay? Uh, last week, we talked about God's grace. I really enjoyed last week's teaching, not because I was teaching it, but because Holy Spirit was really um, encouraging his people concerning his grace. And um, I just enjoyed it because as I was speaking, Holy Spirit was ministering as well. Uh, oftentimes, people don't understand that 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 preachers are the, get the first fruit of the teachings that were given. So it was just a blessing to me to share with you all. So last week we talked about God's grace, which comes from the Greek New Testament word, uh, a charis, which kind of sounds like charity. That's where that came from. Um, is God's unmerited favor, okay? It is kindness from God that we don't deserve. There's nothing we have done nor can ever do to earn this favor, okay? It is a gift from God. Grace is divine assistance given to humans for their regeneration, which is the rebirthing, um, or sanctification, okay? A virtue coming from God, a state of sanctification enjoyed through divine favor. And this definition, this biblical definition came from learningreligion.com if you want to look into it more. But this week, we will be talking about the great reset, okay, which can be needed during the shift. And what do we mean by shift? It simply means where you know that there is something on the inside of you that is pulling you closer to God. You have a desire to want to know him and the beauty of his holiness. You, you just want to be in the presence of the Lord. You know that there's a call uh, to people or a call to do something greater than wh where you are. There is a place where you go from glory to glory and strength to strength. And there is something calling you into that next uh, area and that next place in your life. So that is the great reset that we're gonna be talking about on today. Amen, praise God. So in this journey of life, there are moments when we yearn for a fresh start, okay? A chance to leave behind the burdens of the past and embrace a new beginning, okay? The concept of resetting one's life, usually uh, using biblical principles, offers a profound and spiritually grounded path to transformation and renewal. Drawing from the wisdom and guidance found in the pages of the Bible, you can embark on a transformative process that allows you to recalibrate your lives, okay? Aligning your actions and beliefs with kingdom values, okay? For so long, the people of God have been conditioned to believe that pressing the reset button wasn't God and somehow suffering through life was noble and expected. No, absolutely not, okay? Today, we will explore the idea of the great reset and how it's okay to start anew, to be refreshed and to start with a clean slate. These are times of refreshing. And in these times of refreshing, there is freedom to live a life of joy and peace. Amen. Praise God. Let's keep on going. So <clears throat> what is reset? What, is, what, what, what comes to mind when we think about the word reset? It is the action of restoring something to its original or default state. I love that. Okay. It can refer to a process, action, or mechanism that reverts a system, device, or situation back to its in, uh, in initial or predetermined settings or conditions. Y'all listen. Resets are often used in technology, systems, and personal life to resolve issues, clear errors, or start over. I love this definition of reset because right away it lets me know that um it's it's for systems for personal life to resolve issues clear 
errors or start over, okay? So there are a few reasons why we want to sometimes reset. So as you press the reset button, let me go back. As you press the reset button, let me tell you what that's all about. The idea of resetting one's life is closely related to repentance. Wow, listen. Because repentance involves turning away from sinful behaviors and returning to God. In the New Testament, for example, Jesus often called people to repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. So when we think about resetting, the first thing we think about it can be repentance because repentance is like starting with a clean slate. Do you see how the other side of this slide is blank? It's kind of like that prophetically. It's There's nothing there because you're starting anew. You're starting afresh. It's a clean slate. Amen. So when we repent and turn away from, then guess what? The Bible talks about the Lord throwing our sins in the sea of forgetfulness. In other words, he doesn't remember what you did beforehand. And that's exactly what this represents. Repentance, okay? Um, another thing I want to talk about that we always talk about, especially throughout this particular series, is forgiveness. And the reason why forgiveness is so important because it's one of the hardest things to do, especially when you're walking in a place of offense, especially when someone has done you wrong. It's almost like you want to hold on to that offense because you think you're punishing the person but that's not the case okay so the bible teaches us that god is merciful and forgiving right so in uh first john 1 9 it says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness right so forgiveness allows individuals to experience a fresh start and reset in their relationship with God, okay? So not only when we repent, God forgives us, there's a reset that happens. So if you are becoming a new creation, why not be a new creation in the relationships by which you are having trouble forgiving? Amen. So in other words, it's not fair to ask God to forgive us, but we're not willing to forgive. So that's also a form of resetting. All right. I see you, TikTok. God bless you. And so speaking of the new creation, I love this scripture, Psalms 51, 10 through 13. It says, create in me a clean heart. How do you start forgiving? You, you need to speak this, pray this word over yourselves. And the first declaration is creating me a clean heart, oh God, oh my God, and renew a right spirit within me. You have to have a right spirit in order to even consider forgiving, right? It says, cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore, come on, restoration, resetting. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. You have to be willing to forgive, okay? Then it says, I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. First of all, I wanna say that the prerequisite of teaching transgressors is forgiving those who have trespassed ourselves. It's, it's, it's difficult to pour into people when you are contaminated with unforgiveness. You have to start from a clean slate. You have to start from a place of purity. You have to start from a place of holiness and righteousness in order to qualify for the power of God, for the anointing of God and the authority of Christ. Come on. There are a lot of people preaching that don't have the authority because they refuse to forgive. Come on. So in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, come on, he is a new creation. A new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. That is a strong and powerful declaration. So this transformation represents a kind of reset, right? Where a person is spiritually renewed and changed. Amen. Let's keep on going. Amen. Let's talk about renewal and transformation as well. Continue on with this. 
The Bible says in Romans 12 and 2, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. That's Romans 12 and 2. So this verse encourages us believers to resist conforming to the values, behaviors, and mindsets of the world, but rather to undergo a transformation of renewing our minds. Amen. So what is it? The goal of transformation is to align one's thinking and behaviors with the will of God, okay? Which is good, pleasing, and perfect, okay? So in essence, it calls for a change in perspective and a spiritual renewal to discern and follow God's plan for one's life, okay? We're talking about the great reset on today. And in order to get to that place of resetting your lives, you have to come into alignment with God's will. You need to come into alignment with the word of God and you need to shed off that old way of thinking. So what happens is our perspectives are molded and changed so that we can then walk and move and breathe in the mind of Christ. And as you already have seen in this particular passage, the mind of Christ is perfect. So in other words, it's not about my opinion. It's not about how I feel. What does God say? Woo, come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, what does God say? So uh, this is a good uh, uh, transition into seeking God's guidance through prayer. When we're asking, what does God say? Mm. When facing challenges, believers can seek guidance and reset your path through prayer. That's why communing with the Lord is so important. Amen. So Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present, present your request to God. Come on. Hallelujah. And listen, what happens when you do that? We're talking about the reset. Listen, and the peace of God, whoo, which transcends all understanding, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. You want to know how to reset chaos into peace? You want to know how to reset challenges into change? You want to know how to reset situations of trouble into being triumphant? It says it right here. Every situation by prayer and supplication, by prayer and petition, thanking God that he's already taken care of a thing, thanking God that he's already uh, figured it out in the background on your behalf, believing that the situation and circumstance is going to have the expected end of the promise of God, which is yea and amen in your lives. And when you do that, when you bring it to the Lord, when you release it unto God, when you petition the heavens for a release, when you petition the heavens for a resolve, when you petition heaven for what it is that you need, then peace comes. My God, because peace is that place where you say, you know what? I yield this situation unto you. And I am trusting that you got my back. Hallelujah. See, prayer is a powerful tool for seeking God's guidance and experiencing a reset in challenging times. So Philippians 4, 6 and 7, it encourages believers not to be anxious, but to pray with thanksgiving. The promise is that God's peace which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds. See, prayer allows you to lay your burdens before God, seeking his wisdom, comfort, and direction. And it's something about seeking God for his wisdom, comfort, and direction that lets him know that we trust him. Oh, my God. 
Hallelujah. We're talking about the great reset on today, people of God. What is perseverance and endurance? And what does that have to do with the great reset? Because we're talking about times of refreshing and sometimes a reset is what we need to experience times of refreshing. Amen. So in James 1, uh, 2 through 4, it says, consider it pure joy. Yes. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. My God, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Amen. Amen. So this particular passage, people of God, reminds us believers that trials can lead to perseverance and maturity. Don't you know that sometimes when you go through things, it's just to build up your faith in God? My God. When facing challenges, it's an opportunity to grow up in your faith, becoming more resilient and complete in one's relationship with God. Have you all ever been in a situation where you thought you wouldn't get through it, where you thought you were going to faint, where you thought you were going to give up, but something on the inside of you rose up and you just surrendered to the Lord and said, Lord, I can't do nothing with this situation anyway, so I might as well trust you with it. I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. And as soon as you release the responsibility of trying to fix it and work it out on your own, a peace came over you like never before. And next time you look up, you went through that trial with flying colors. You learned some things. Uh huh. You grew up in your faith. And then you know what happens? then you meet somebody along the way that is currently going through what God brought you through. And you know what? You're able to encourage them from a place of a testimony because you went through that same trial. You went through those same challenges and you're able with authority, with all knowing, with the conviction of Holy Spirit. But guess what? God is not a respecter of person. And if he brought me up out of this pit, guess what? He can do the same for you. See, sometimes when we go through things, it's not just for us. Matter of fact, most of the time, it's not just for us. It's for the next person that's not as strong as you were when you went through it. So then the Lord will send you on an assignment to walk with somebody or to encourage somebody, to let them know to keep on going, to let them know that you know what, you can do it, hallelujah, to let them know, I know it looks bad right now, but I want you to know that God is working on your behalf. You need to reset your thinking. You need to reset your com confession. You need to be let that conviction of Holy Spirit come upon you so that you can speak life over the situation no matter what it looks like like and the next thing you know because you went through it now you have the perseverance and the endurance it's just like people who like to work out like I've been working out I'm down about 70 pounds from last year by God's grace it's not easy hallelujah but it's worth it amen and and I can tell you when I first started out on my bike, I got a bike. I said, Lord, I'm going to invest in myself. And I started out, I couldn't do but five minutes because of the asthma that I don't claim, but I'm much better, praise God. But when I was younger, I had asthma attacks frequently. I had chronic asthma, but I'm believing in God's complete and total healing. But I would get on that bike, y'all, and I could only do five minutes at a time. And I would be like, you know what? That's not good enough. So I said to myself every day until I get to a certain amount of time, I'm going to go a little bit further than I did the day before. And the next thing you know, that endurance kicked in and I was able to build up my endurance. So I went from five minutes when I first got my bike to doing 20 miles a day. On the highest level of resistance. That's called perseverance and endurance. And that's the same thing God does with our faith. We may not feel like we're strong enough when we first are in a trial. I can't take this. This is crazy, Lord. I'm a faint, Lord. I'm a backslide, Lord. I'm calling my ex, Lord. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go back into some old habits because this is crazy. But the next thing you know, the Lord begins to build up your endurance. And you say, you know what? 
I'm going to trust you a little bit more today than I did yesterday. And the next thing you know, you look up and that particular situation is gone. That particular situation is behind you. That particular situation did not cause you to faint or fall, but what did it do? It gave you the, 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 the supernatural power to go through it. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see you. I see you, Gigi's Beauty Compound. Hallelujah. I see you, Audrey. God bless you. Listen, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all of your ways submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Come on. This is entrusting God's plan. Sometimes a reset requires trusting in God's plan for our lives. See, trust allows God to guide our paths. It's a reset in perspective, acknowledging God's sovereignty and wisdom because we can't do it in and of ourselves, people of God. We have to go back. Okay, you know what? I don't understand everything that's happening right now, but I'm going to trust the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to trust him. I don't care what it looks like, but I know that there are more than one path because it says paths with an S. So that means don't um, be sitting in self-condemnation because you think you messed up in one area or you miss God is several paths. Hallelujah. And the Lord wants to know that sometimes there may be a reset happening. There may be a shift that takes place in our lives where the path shifts over to a different path. It doesn't mean that the old path was incorrect. It just means that there's a shift taking place in your life and he wants to do a reset or a new thing. Woo. My God, let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Let's talk about fellowship and community because this is important when we're talking about resetting. Hebrews 10 24 and 25, it says, it says, spur one another on towards love and good deeds and to not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Okay, so listen, as believers, we can find support and encouragement in community of fellow believers when a resetting is needed. In other words, what does that mean? That means right now what we're doing is we are in fellowship. What, what we're doing right now, we are coming together <clears throat> to share the word of God and expand the kingdom of God through the love of Christ by way of Holy Spirit. That's what we're doing right now. So you have made up in your mind, you have made a conscious decision to tune in so that you can hear life being spoken over you and your situation. That's community. Hallelujah. Amen. That means that you know that there is uh, iron sharpens iron. And sometimes we need to be challenged by the men and women of God sent into our lives to walk with us through these times of, of resetting. Hallelujah. Amen. We're almost done. We're almost done. Let's talk about letting go of the past. Oh, this is a good one, y'all. Don't, don't log off now. Don't log off now letting go of the past amen <clears throat> philippians 3 13 and 14 it says forgetting <clears throat> excuse me forgetting what is behind we're letting go of the past right and we said this scripture earlier but this is a little bit different forgetting what is behind and strain towards what is ahead pressing on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called us. Oh my goodness. Amen. This particular scripture encourages believers to let go of past mistakes, sins, and regrets. That's a big one. It's a reminder that dwelling on the past can hinder progress in the present. Oh my God. Instead of focusing on moving forward in faith and obedience. In doing so, you will experience a reset because in this life as human beings, there are times when we make mistakes. There are times when we make bad or wrong decisions or choices. And what happens is um, our, our carnal nature will have us stuck in that, that bad decision where we can't move forward because we're so upset that we chose the wrong thing or made the wrong decision. But God is saying, let it go. 
because guess what? Even in those bad decisions, he's still going to work on our behalf because that is part of our inheritance of sons of God. That is part of our kingdom inheritance for the Lord to still give us wisdom to navigate even bad decisions. Oh my God. My God, I see this, this picture for those of you who can't see my screen. I have a picture of a young lady. She's holding a balloon and she's let this red balloon go. And the red balloon is flying in the wind. That is a perfect visual of letting go of the past letting go of bad decisions, letting go of sin mistakes, letting go of, of those things that, that would try to condemn you. Because once you repent and once you say, Lord, forgive me, I'm, I miss God, we all have fallen short. But it's not about staying in that place of falling short. It's about getting up. And when you get up, you let go. Hmm. Hallelujah. It is not my business where this, this balloon lead, lead, leads. Uh, uh, or or is found or where it goes where it lands it's not my business because guess what i've let it go Whoop. hallelujah i've let it go is it i it's no longer in my hands so why am i trying to babysit it why am i getting in the boat following it to see where it's going oh lord let me just make sure it don't get stuck in the tree i don't care where this balloon go if i let it go i let it go now I put it in the hands of the Lord. And that's what we do a lot of times as believers. When we let stuff go, we still want to babysit it. We still want to check up on it. We still want to peek around the corner to see if it's all the way gone yet. No, let it go. I want y'all to just say, let it go. Hallelujah. Let it go. Let go of the regrets. Let go of the sin. Let go of the mistakes. You say, Lord, I'm sorry. I missed you on this. I repent. I, I ask that you cover this situation under the blood. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. Now, Father, I release this situation into your hands. Ooh, let it go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let's talk about seeking God's strength. Seeking God's strength. Okay. Isaiah 40 and 31 says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength renew okay they will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not be faint come on see during difficult times believers can reset their resilience on god's power rather than their own gaining the endurance to keep moving forward what is it all about it is about continuing forward in the midst of the trial Hallelujah. Sometimes trials can make you feel like you're walking through mud with weights on. But guess what? As long as you keep on trudging, keep on moving, and what you don't understand is he's behind you, pushing you forward, saying, I know it don't feel like I'm with you, but I am on your back pressing you forward. That's why he's telling us to press, because as long as you press forward, you won't sink down. Come on hallelujah hallelujah so when you're seeking god's strength what happens there's a stillness that comes over us he he gives you the intuition in a situation there is the life energy that comes when you are communing with holy spirit concerning the strength you need to move forward the emptiness that you felt is gone there's a true self evolving on the inside of you where you can have the mind of christ and the likeness of god and the mind of god and the heart of god dwelling on the inside of you there's something that happens that lets you know i cannot give up hallelujah i will not give up i will not let this beat me why because i know that i'm not in this fight alone Think of being in a ring with a giant and you like, oh my God, how am I supposed to beat this giant? But then you look over in your corner. <laughs> Holy Spirit say, sit down, I got this. <laughs> That's how it is. We know the story of David and Goliath. Hallelujah. The only thing you have to do is you have to recognize that it is not about what's in you in and of yourself in your own strength but it's the hope in the lord that you have that renews your strength Ooh. 
Oh my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love it. I love it. Let's keep on going. We're going to talk about staying anchored. Okay. Staying anchored. Hebrews 1, 11 and 1. It defines faith as confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Hallelujah. See, Hebrews 11 and 1 defines faith and its importance, okay? Faith is the anchor that keeps us rooted, even when facing challenges. It's confidence in God's promises and a reminder of the unseen eternal reality. I love this because it lets me know that even in times of, of challenge, even in times of situations that seem too much to bear sometimes, that's not the end all, the be all. Because we know that we've already won. We know that this earthly flesh is temporary. We know that life is but a vapor. We know that even the temporary uh, chaos that happens sometimes eventually has to come to an end because the Lord promises us uh, uh, that there are seasons. Hallelujah. And when you're in a season that seems to be just, oh my goodness, I just can't take one more thing. Know that it's temporary. And, and what you have to do is you have to pull on your faith, which is your anchor. Pull on your faith. And you know what, Lord? I'm just gonna sit right here. I saw a picture of a huge um, ship, um, you know, where people go on uh, vacations and stuff like that. And the ship was in the middle of the ocean, but yet it was sitting still right in the middle of the ocean. Wanna know why it was sitting still? Because of, it was anchored. And sometimes when there are choppy waters, sometimes where there are storms, sometimes where the waves and the wind and the rain seem to be battling, everything seems to be going against you, you have to remain anchored in your faith because it's in the anchoring of your faith where you are unmovable and unshakable. It's in the anchoring of your faith that you know the reset is going to come. It's in the anchoring of your faith where you receive supernatural strength to endure whatever season you're in. Hallelujah. What did Paul say? He was content in all things. So sometimes when you're in the pit, you, you content. When you are being feeling prosperous, you are content. When you're going through trials and tribulations, you are content. When you have to minister, you are content. When you need to be ministered to, you are content. Why? Because these are seasons. Woo. hallelujah these are seasons amen let's keep on going let's keep on going hallelujah hallelujah waiting on the lord i love this psalms 27 14 wait for the lord be strong and take heart and wait for the lord hallelujah psalms 27 and 14 is a verse that encourages patience and trust in the lord it reminds us believers that in times of uncertainty or difficulty, we should not be discouraged, but rather wait for the Lord with strength and courage. Hallelujah. Waiting on the Lord is an expression of our faith. Okay. It acknowledging that God's timing is perfect and that he is in control. It's a call to be steadfast and to find hope in God's promises knowing that he will ultimately provide guidance and deliverance. Waiting doesn't mean inactivity, but a patient trust that God's timing is perfect. It's a reset in our need for control, acknowledging God's sovereignty. So in other words, you keep doing what you're doing. You keep on obeying God. You keep on staying in the vein of righteousness. Keep on living from a place of holy living. Keep on living in a place of obedience. Keep on living in a place of, of building your relationship with the Lord. Keep on encouraging people. Keep on speaking life over your situation. Keep on calling those things that be not as though they were in the wait. Because it's still in his timing. And remember, Heaven's timing is not the same as earthly timing. You sitting there talking about, man, I've been waiting four, five, six years. 
for God to move. You don't understand that he's getting all the people, places and things and the, the puzzle pieces together for it to go smoothly. And you trying to rush him and the financier hasn't even uh, received his, his settlement yet for what, what's going to happen when he going to uh, give the money to your business. You missing the, the major piece. So now all the pieces sitting there in a major uh, philanthropist that's called to your vision has not received his inheritance from his family yet. It's going to take, he's been in litigation for two or three years. God is waiting for that final piece. And you sitting there at the table and everybody looking at each other because because the main part still ain't there yet because you are not waiting on God. And, and your five years is five minutes in heaven's time. Give God a moment to get everybody together because remember we're living in the new covenant where we exercise free will. And you do realize that some people have the right to, to say yes or no when, when God gives them a directive. And there's a lot of people that have missed God because they have not been obedient to his leading and guiding. So guess what God has to do when one person says, no, he has to sit one down and raise up another. And in that raising up the, the, the person that's going to be obedient, that may take a little more time. My God. So in the midst of waiting on the Lord in the reset, know that he is working it out on your behalf. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's keep on going. All right. So we're talking about beginning again. Ephesians 4, 23 uh, through 32. We're just going to read uh, the summation of this and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind and to put on new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, mm, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Come on, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. I love this scripture because it gives us a directive on how to reset. Don't you know things happen where you can get angry with one another, but the Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Why? Because it is in that place, in that time, in that door, that window of opportunity where the enemy can come in and cause dissension where God has called you to come together. Hallelujah. Especially when you're dealing with covenant relationships like husbands and wives, you could argue all day long, but the Bible says, don't let the sun go down. In other words, don't go to bed with that. Come on, let's work this out. I'm mad at you, but you're not sleeping on the couch. You sit right here and you pout over there. <laughs> Get your toe off me. I'm going to put my cold toe on you, but you're going to sit right here. Why you do not let the enemy come in between that. And that's what, because, because guess what happens? When you, when you go to bed angry, especially when you married and you tell your husband to go sleep on the couch and he got his phone, guess who waiting to text him at two and three in the morning because you ain't acting right, see? Oh, 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 oh. What happened when you kick your, kick your wife out because she said something disrespectful and you say, no, nah, go to your mama house. And she take a detour to that ex house who been bugging her. Please come back. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Guess what? He got more money than you. Oh, oh Lord. Don't log off now. God in your business. So that's why it says, don't let the sun go down. Don't give the, the, the enemy any room to come in between what God has ordained. That's what it says. So begin again is a great reset. Even in your marriages, even in those covenant relationships, even as mad as you get, you better think about the time that made you fall in love in the first place. Because guess what? You cannot think about something sweet and nice and loving and stay mad. So if you stay mad, you're choosing to stay mad. You're choosing to be unforgiving. But think about that time at the altar when y'all was, was staring in each other's eyes waiting for me. You may now kiss the bride. And you're like, come on, I want to kiss my bride. Hurry up, hurry up. You better think about that. 
Hallelujah. You better think about that time where you went on your first date and you had the butterflies and you was like, oh my God, I'm so nervous, but I just feel in my heart that this is the one for me. You better go back to that place in your mind and that place in your heart so that you don't go to bed angry. I don't know why I'm staying on this, but Holy Spirit knows there's someone out there that is having dissension in their home and God wants you to clear it up so that there'd be no place for the enemy to come and break up what he has ordained the great reset. Ha, hallelujah. Come on, you can begin again. People of God, husbands and wives, you can begin again. Your marriage, your covenant relationship is a witness to the world that God is still in the marrying business. Ha, hallelujah. He's still in agreeing, agreeance with covenant relationship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's keep on going. Oh my God. Finally, let's talk about salvation. John 3, 16, 17, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Listen, the great reset is ultimately salvation. Hallelujah. It's self-exclamatory. It is, it is the epitome of a resetting of our souls. It is, I know that I am heaven bound. I know that I am kingdom bound. I know that I belong to the Lord. The great reset is I am not my own. My life is not my own. I was bought with a price and, that, and, and, and I know that I'm saved and there is life after I leave here and that is eternal rest and comfort and love and joy and peace with him. Hallelujah. The reward of the great reset is salvation. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So our conclusion for today's teaching, as we draw this message to a close, I want to encourage each of you to embrace the idea of a great reset in your lives. In these challenging times, it's natural to feel overwhelmed. It's natural to feel burdened and in need of a fresh start. The good news is that God's word provides us with a blueprint of resetting our lives according to his divine plan. When we overtake this, undertake this spiritual reset, it paves the way for the profound blessing of times of refreshing. Hallelujah, because that's what the series we're in. Remember the wisdom found in Psalms 27 and 14, which urges us to wait for the Lord, okay? Wait on the Lord. As we eagerly anticipate his guidance, we do so with strength and courage. This waiting is not passive. It's an active trust of God's timing, a deep-seated faith that his plan is perfect and that he holds our lives in his loving hands. The principles we've explored today, seeking God's guidance through prayer, repentance and forgiveness, renewing our minds through scripture, trusting in God's plan, perseverance in trials, the strength of our Christian community and the release of the past all serve as instruments of the great reset. Holy Spirit guides us towards spiritual renewal, growth and a deeper intimacy with our heavenly father, hallelujah. It's essential to recognize that as we reset our lives according to God's principles, according to his word, according to his heart and his mind, we make room for times of refreshing. Just as a field is nourished by well-timed rain, our souls are nourished by God's grace. In times of refreshing, we experience the joy of his presence the peace that surpasses all understanding and the hope that renews our spirits. Hallelujah. So we open, we're open, we open to be in the great reset for it is not a defeat, but a divine opportunity for our fresh beginning. It's an invitation to release the old, embrace the new and discover the abundance of God's grace. Hallelujah. In these moments, we find ourselves 
revitalized, renewed, and ready to walk in God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and close out in prayer. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we come before you with hearts filled with gratitude and hope. We thank you, Lord, for the great reset that you have revealed to us through your word. We acknowledge you, Father, that in this world, we often find ourselves sometimes burdened, weary, and in need of a reset, but we know that in you, there's always a way to start anew. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would guide us as we seek to reset our lives according to your divine plan. Help us to turn to you in prayer, seeking your guidance in all aspects of our journey. Grant your people the courage to confess their sins, to repent, and to embrace your forgiveness, knowing that you cleanse and set the captives free. We ask, Father, to give them strength for mind renewal through your holy word. Let the scriptures be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. May they find the wisdom and understanding needed to live in accordance with your will. I pray for the grace for them to release the past, to let go of the things that hinder progress and to work forward in faith, focusing on the prize that is found only in you. As they reset their lives according to your principles, we pray for times of refreshing. Hallelujah. Let your presence be a constant source of joy and peace in their lives. May they experience the abundant life you promise to those who seek you with open hearts. Hallelujah. Father, may they entrust the journey of resetting to your loving care. Lead, guide, and sustain them through all seasons of life. We thank you for your faithfulness and unending love you pour out upon us in times of refreshing. In Jesus, your son, mighty name that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to take a moment to thank you all for hanging with us. I know we went a little bit longer, but in times of reset, you just need a little more time. And we just want to be obedient to Holy Spirit to say what it is that he wants us to say. Hallelujah. If you want to sow into the ministry, if you were blessed, if you were encouraged and you want to give, you can do so. And um, I'll put the cash app up later. Uh, Those of you who already have it, um, God bless you all. You already have it. I just want to just say thank you. And I pray that you are open to the great reset in times of refreshing. Hallelujah. You are Prophet L.A. Holtz. Follow me on TikTok at L.A. Holtz, writer and director. I love you all with the love of the Lord. And until next week, God bless you all as we um, continue our series, Times of Refreshing. Hallelujah. Thank you all for joining. Thank you, uh, Gigi's Beauty Compound. And I love you all with the love of the Lord. All right. Signing off of TikTok first. Love you guys. Love you. All right, signing off of Facebook next. Amen. Love you guys. God bless you. Okay, that's the wrong thing. Here we go. Amen. Amen. Stop. Amen. And stopping recording.